these holdover timetables are something that pilots may see, dispatchers may see in an operation, or these holdover times may be calculated by de-icing personnel. The main thing to look at with these holdover timetables, this one we're looking at is for a type 1 fluid. So that is a fluid that is going to de-ice the airplane. It's going to remove any contamination. And it's not designed to really provide a lot of protection for the airplane. Type 1 fluid, that's for removing um, removing from the airplane any any contamination. So this type fluid, this is a type 4 fluid. And this type of fluid, this does provide anti-icing protection. So the main thing to look at with this information is... The reason we have so many different types of precipitation for winter precipitation listed in the METAR is because you can see here we have guidelines for frost, we have guidelines for snow, for freezing drizzle, for light freezing rain, and then rain on a cold soaked wing. So with this information that we see on this timetable, uh, we can see on here, depending on our mixture of our fluid, so let's say in this example, let's say that it's 50-50 and let's say that it right now is between 0 and 3 degrees Celsius if uh, we have light freezing rain happening we have between a 5 to 10 minute holdover time only so that means between when the application starts on the airplane from when it takes off we have between 5 to 10 minutes and that's a range of, of time given again it just depends you don't want to have the blast of jets blow it off there's some cautions down in the bottom here that we notice and so we have to pay attention to that notice if you have something let's say so this is light freezing rain if for example we have just plain freezing rain there is no whole over time guidelines that exist for a heavy freezing rain or freezing rain and so this is important to notice um, there are certain situations where no holdover time guidelines actually exist. So that is important to note. <clears throat> Some conditions can affect our holdover times. We mentioned the precipitation stopping. We mentioned if it changes the rate of precipitation. So if it gets more precipitation happening, the type of precipitation changes. So we're going to take a look at how you can revise the holdover times after something changes after the de-icing has commenced. And let's say it's been de-iced and we have a longer than five minute holdover time and we're waiting to depart, this is what we can do. So if conditions improve, the precipitation stops and we can take off in the normal amount of time like provided on the original holdover time, no problem, the airplane can leave. Uh, if the, yes, so if precipitation stops, holdover time has not been exceeded, we can still depart. If we have the conditions change, we have to figure out if our new holdover time is shorter than our initial holdover time. And if that's the case, we are going to have to lose some of our holdover time. So for this example, let's say our original holdover time, we have 30 minutes. We've used 15 minutes of that holdover time. And half, that would mean that half of our original holdover time is still available because half of it has been used. So we take the percentage of our original holdover time and we apply it to our new holdover time. In an example of things getting worse, so we've got half of our original holdover time available. If our new holdover time has now been 10 minutes, let's say before it was 20 minutes, and we had already used 10 minutes of it. That means we still have half of it available, but let's say conditions got worse. Now we have only 10 minutes available. So a half of our 10 minutes available leaves only five minutes of our holdover time still remaining. So whereas initially we would have had 10 minutes remaining, conditions worsened, we only have five minutes of our holdover time still remaining. And that's just an example of how to can calculate a new holdover time if conditions got worse. And it's the same in reverse if conditions actually got better.